Hi everybody, I'm Tom Vassell and welcome to Week in Review, a short video we put out each week where we give short descriptions of games that we play throughout the week so that you can shortly decide whether you want to learn more about them, in which case you look at the short links. I can't always say the word short so many times. We have a link in the description below where you can go look at the full reviews of each of these videos. So let's get started. Hey, hey everybody, Z Garcia here. Last week I reviewed three things. Here we go. I reviewed a card game called Formosa Flowers, which I rate a five out of ten. It's based on a traditional card game or probably several traditional card games and so it plays that way. It's one of these games that takes a concept we've known. If you're, if you're a gamer or maybe grew up with these games, takes that, gives you a specialized deck right, with artwork tied to that game and simplifies normally. Strips away some rules and gives you something simpler. It's okay. It also doesn't do anything necessarily more interesting than you could do with a deck of cards. Hence the score, okay? It's right down the middle of the road. I don't hate it. I enjoyed my time with it. I wouldn't necessarily recommend anyone go out and buy it, though. I reviewed Grand Bois, or Great Forest, which I rate a 6.5 out of 10. And this one is a tile-laying game where you have a secret hidden color. And you're trying to position your little critters on the board so that you score the most points. That all sounds great. I like hidden color games. I like tile laying, especially where you're like covering up other parts of the forest. That's great. But the scoring in it is a little lame. And I don't think the, the game scales very well. You want to play where there's enough colors that belong to no one that bluffing is interesting. If you play with four players, one color belongs to no one. So who cares? I'll just cover up any old color, and I'm likely hitting someone at the table. Makes sense? If you play with two, you each control two colors. Don't like that. So three players is where it's at, which is a very narrow window. Overall, it's okay, but um, it's just the replayability and the scoring don't make for a super interesting game. Lastly, I reviewed a new faction for New York Shima Hex called Troglodytes, which I rate an 8 out of 10. It's solid. The new one has um, it has an interesting amount of new rules or rules specific to that faction. So I wouldn't necessarily say it's one for a brand new player to Niroshima Hex, but it's very flexible, and you can uh, you can use the faction to answer a lot of different sort of you know gameplay scenarios. Right, the way I play that faction is likely different from the way you'll play it because of the reactions and sort of the choices you can make in the game. The faction is made up of cannibals, and you can remove one of your own faction tiles from the board to soup up another one, right? So, really neat. I enjoyed it. But again, it's a little tricky, and you want to make sure you've got some experience under your belt before you jump into troglodytes. But if you if you enjoy the game, do it. I think you're really going to enjoy it. And that's it for me. I'm Z Garcia. See you on the next one. Hey everybody, this past week in review, I took a look at a lot of games, ending the week with silver and gold and um, illusion. And then I also took a, uh, a look at several other games involving uh, you know, Babylonia, Dino Genix in the expansion, Smartphone Inc. in the expansion, Tapestry, and, and, uh, and some of the uh, Project Elite. So a lot of great games. All of them were good. There were a couple of, uh, there was one really bad review, one that was, oh, this is pretty good, and the rest were actually pretty excellent reviews. So go check those out. We'll see you soon. Hello everyone, this is Graham Manderson, and this week I looked at Trial of the Temples. This uses a variation of the I Split You Choose mechanism to collect resources, which you'll spend later on in the round to move up on some trial tracks. Now I like the simplicity of this game, but it also gives you some chances to make some good, tough decisions. So I gave this one a 7.5 out of 10 and the Dice Tower seal of approval. And that's it for this week. Hey there everybody, it's Mike Delicio, and this week I reviewed the solo modes for two games. First, I reviewed the Dark Judges expansion for Judge Dread Helter Skelter, which is kind of a re-theme of the Martin Wallace Wildlands tactical skirmish game. The Dark Judges adds a pretty simple AI system that allows for a fun uh, tactical skirmish game if you're a solo gamer and you want to kind of scratch that itch. It does a fine job of that. I gave that a 7 out of 10. And then I also reviewed The Magnificent, which is a puzzly Euro game where you are utilizing Tetromino pieces. It's a themed around magic and magicians. Not a whole lot of connection between the theme and the mechanics, but an enjoyable solo puzzle game. I gave that a 7.5 out of 10. That's it for me. That's it for me this week. Let's keep it moving.
All right, for me, first of all, we had Tellstones, which was a game I absolutely despised from Riot Games. It's just seven stones in a row. You're moving them around, trying to remember which stones are where. That's it. I didn't like it at all. Electioneer, a game I really wanted to like, but too, the graphic design was too overwhelming. There's too much going on in this. There's some interesting concepts here trying to win an election uh, with the subway system and more. You'll have to watch the review to find out. Uh, man, I, I, I think this could have been better. Ecosystem. This is a decent drafting game where you're drafting cards and putting them in a grid in front of you. It's fine. Could have been better. It might get lost in the shuffle amongst other drafting games. Imagine this. I, Magician. Sorry, maybe it is a magician. I don't know. It doesn't matter. This is a game in which you have a sheet and you're going to draw lines on it following a pattern that's shown to you. And then, hey, there's a picture and you figure out what the picture is. Simple, fun idea. It actually worked pretty well. Then we have Garum, which looks like a fairly boring game, but it's not actually. It's interesting. You're putting these tiles in squares and then trying to control rows and columns. Scales well. I found it to be fun and enjoyable. Funkoverse, Nightmare Before Christmas. I took a look at the newest set for that. Um, Hey, you know, it had some cool characters, including one of my favorites, Oogie Boogie, with his own pair of dice. Um, so, Dinogenics, Controlled Chaos. This is the expansion for Dinogenics. My opinion of Dinogenics has gone down slightly because I feel like there could be a runaway leader, and it's very chaotic. Well, this expansion takes care of the chaos part somewhat, and even helps with the runaway leader a little bit. In fact, this extension is almost essential if you like the game. Also, it adds water dinosaurs. Uh, Carcassonne Maps. This is a tricky one to go out and hunt and find, but these are really cool. Big maps in which you play Carcassonne on them in Germany or France or Great Britain. Really like them. Uh, they're going to be tricky to maybe order off the internet, but if you can find them, they're worth getting and maybe it will rekindle Carcassonne for you like it did for me. Tammany Hall. Tammany Hall, which I believe the box is right here. Tammany Hall, great, mean game as all get out, area control game, but this new version of it brings it back, and I'm finding myself enjoying it more than before. Undaunted North Africa, an amazing uh, sequel to Undaunted Normandy. The Undaunted system is really growing on me, one of my favorite tactical war games that exists, and this one adds vehicles and does so in a way where the vehicles don't dominate the action, but add to the fun. And then finally, Mystic Veil. I reviewed the app for this one. Great app to the point where I would play this over the actual card game. It's really well put together, really well done. A card crafting slash deck builder game. A lot of fun. Um, I also took, I, I compared and contrasted the new Arcane Wonder slash Dice Diary Essentials versions of Aquatica and Smartphone to the original ones. I played through the new version on What's Happening of Scythe this week. I ranked all the Funkoverse creatures, or uh, figures, or people, from 1 to 40. That's how many there are right now. Well, I, we put up a couple werewolf games, including the Ghost this week as a special guest. Uh, I continued my 10,000 and Low series, did a boring unboxing, we did a crowd surfing, a board game breakfast, a lot of different videos went up this week. We're back. We'll see you next week. Until then, I'm Tom Vassar, and you've been watching Week in Review on the Dice Tower.